Good morning, everyone. I'm sure everyone who here is here is probably terrified that they allowed me to speak, but I will do my best. If I struggle to make eye contact, I'm just trying to get through this. There's no good way for me to start. My condolences to the family. I'm truly honored to be allowed to speak here in front of you all. Thank you for the support from all who showed up today to pay their respects. Me and I are started the academy together back in 2016, where I had the pleasure of sitting directly next to him. For those of you who didn't know Iyer, he served and continued to serve in the Army. And Iyer, like so many others in the military, had a Mustang, or as we called it, a Pogue Stang. Iyer showed up every morning, at least an hour early, while it's still dark out, sitting in his car with his hood pulled over his head, wearing sunglasses, which for a bunch of reasons scared me. <laughs> As two guys both coming from the military, we quickly figured out that we shared the same disturbing sense of humor and life experiences that included mopping concrete in the pouring rain and working parties, which couldn't be any further from a party. After finishing the academy, me and I were both sent to the same division, David III, where we would end up on the same shift and response area. I couldn't have had a better person to navigate the beginning of this career with. We would quickly befriend another fool on the shift in Vinny. On a constant mission to outdo each other, we would try and outwork one another. Getting to work alongside each other, you get to know each other on a very personal level. While in between calls, talking to our wives, Vinny, who if you didn't know him and his wife Rebecca, would think, man, what did she do for him to yell at her like that? Only to find out he was perplexed why she hadn't got the Amazon package that was dropped off 30 seconds ago. Which then let us know that it was her fault. I was always asked why you can't talk to me as nice as you speak with your wife, which was a rhetorical question. And then Iyer. Well, me and Vinny were always worried about Iyer. If I'm honest, we thought Ashley must have been tearing in Iyer because he would roll his windows up and drive away. <laughs> he swore he was okay, but we never knew what Ashley was doing to him in private. <laughs> All joking aside, one of the most beautiful things to witness is your close friends you spend so much time with grow as human beings. The pride and glow in his eyes when speaking about Ashley and Andrew make you see your friends in a different light. One that not everyone else may get to see. There's nothing more important in this world than our families. Despite the never-ending positives I have to say about Josh's work ethic, what I'm most proud of is the father and husband I knew him to be. I know Andrew is too young to understand, but best believe we will let him know the true hero his father was. We all have our own reasons for getting into this profession, but after some time, I think a lot of us can agree we do it for each other. To make sure everyone gets back home safe to their loved ones. Looking at Iyer from the outside, Josh could look very serious. People would always ask me, what's wrong with Iyer? I always said that Iyer had multi-personality disorder. His face would make you think he was infuriated. And if you asked him, he would proceed to oddly whisper and tell you he's great. Ten minutes later, he might look like someone killed his dog, only for him to begin yelling at you, telling you you're an idiot. I'd laugh and tell them, that's just Iyer. You gotta love it. Iyer had road rage, except he wasn't driving. 
He was just infuriated by how people would drive while he directed traffic. <laughs> Iyer got deployed and was gone for about a year, which gave us plenty of crap to give him for falling behind. But this wouldn't stop Josh. He came back and it was like he never left. Homicide suspect, he would get you. Stole a sandwich from QT, Iyer's getting you too. No one was safe. No matter what anyone thought, he went out and gave his best, no matter the circumstances. Trying out and putting in for positions everyone else was too scared to even attempt. Although he... Although we came into this profession together, I've always looked up to Iyer. I always envy people with brothers, seeing how close a bond could be, and a lot of times how the younger brother idolized their older brother, which thankfully I have got to see in my sons. Well, in this case, I'm that younger brother. Josh was everything I could only hope to be, and I was just thrilled I got to be there with him. We have spent our entire careers together, which is why this pains me so much. No one I have met alone had the honor to call such a close friend in this profession could be taken from me that would cause the pain that this has caused me. Recently, Sergeant Crum had created an Officer of the Year for second shift in David III which was voted by everyone on the shift. To no surprise, I was the one chosen. Sergeant Crumb sat me down and explained that it was very close between me and I, letting me know it could have went either way between us. <laughs> but I didn't need any explanation. I knew Josh was the best that we had. For all my brothers and sisters here from law enforcement, don't let this deter anyone moving forward, as this is the last thing that Iyer would want from us. He gave his all until the very end, and we owe it to him and the others tragically killed to pick up where they left off. I pray and can't do so without crying, trying to understand why. And although there is so much left for Josh on this earth, God has decided it was time for his son to come home. I'll look. I love you, Josh, and I know you're here with us watching over. Until we meet again, may you rest in peace, my brother. Thank you.